in this video, we're going to kind of head back to our roots. I know I've been putting a lot of content out recently about marketing and using the bot callers technology, the AI conversational AI technology to help with marketing, to help create scale and opportunity in your business. But today's conversation is geared towards really all of my high net worth individuals, my business owners, entrepreneurs, and clients. But also I'm talking to life insurance agents and life insurance advisors. I've found myself in a competitive situation recently, and it happens from time to time. You know, I've, I've put content out there and one of my acquaintances reached out to me and was like, hey, I want you to run some designs for me. And so I ran some designs for him. And then I found myself being shopped around to other financial advisors. Not that they were seeing my design, but that they wanted a second opinion, which is totally understandable. The problem with the second opinion that they were getting is now they're on their third, fourth, and fifth opinion and talking to a lot of different people and kind of confused. But I want to show you today what one of these advisors, and really there's been a couple others, but I'm not going to point them out because this one is just absolutely blatant. But one of the advisors, he's either ignorant, lazy or greedy. And I'm gonna let you guys be the determination or to determine what you think he is. But when we're gonna do, and everyone needs to know this, when you are looking at purchasing and not just an IUL policy, but any type of permanent policy, be it whole life, universal life, IUL or VUL, there, there's seven caveats that you really need to understand or your advisor, life insurance agent needs to understand because if they don't understand it, they're gonna do you a disservice and they may understand it and they just be greedy to try to take advantage of you. So I'm gonna shed some light on this stuff today. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to our channel. This is really helpful stuff and I really want you guys, listen, I'm a life insurance guy and I, I hate being put in the category of a life insurance guy because what I'm about to show you today is the exact reason why we get a bad reputation. This fool that did this is what causes us problems in the life insurance industry with high net worth and it is why there's such a level of distrust. But hopefully I'm gonna shed some light on that today. So here's the seven caveats. Do you have the right advisor? And again, are they intelligent in what they're doing? Are they experienced? Do they understand? Or are they lazy, ignorant, or greedy? Lazy, there's no excuse for. Ignorance is the, the fact, you know, maybe the one thing that we can try to coach them and teach them if they work with a mentor or a trusted advisor to get them out of that. But the greed part, man, the greed part just kills me. Is it the right company? Is it the company that's been around for a good period of time? Have they done the right thing for their clients? And let's face it, this is getting harder and harder to find companies that keep the promises to their clients over the long term. Even some of the most respected companies that have had a great reputation are now starting to change a little bit. Inside of those companies, is it the right product? So they, they manufacture, these insurance companies manufacture a lot of products out there. Not all of them are worth putting your dollars into. And so your advisor needs to know that and inside of the company, you need to be able to pick the proper product for what you're trying to accomplish. There's different products for different purposes. Some are for accumulation of cash value. Others are for a death benefit design. They're not all created equal. You need to know what you're doing. And then when you pick the right company with the right product, with then you gotta find the right design. Again, what are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to maximize cash accumulation or is it a death benefit only play? Are we trying to do a certain premium funding schedule or are we trying to do a certain distribution schedule? Like what are we trying to accomplish? with this design. And again, your advisor needs to be able to know how to do that. Inside of the design, all of these products have multiple index crediting strategies. And we have to pick the proper index crediting strategies or combination of the index crediting strategies. You know, there's these volatility control indices. There's the S&P 500. There's multi-year point to points. There's one year point to point. There's blended strategies. Which one is the right one for what you're trying to accomplish? And again, I already mentioned the funding strategy, but it's that important. What is the proper funding strategy? Are we doing a short pay? Are we doing a long pay? Are we gonna change the amounts on an annual basis? And then the last one, is it the proper usage of leverage? Withdrawals, loans, leverage. Are we getting the right mix of how to get the money out of the product? It's not just straightforward, let me take a withdrawal. There are ways to use the leverage inside of these companies to maximize your design. So those are the seven caveats of a properly done IUL. 
Today, we're focusing on the right advisor. Is the right agent, are they good? Do they know what they're talking about? Or are they lazy, ignorant at best, and at worst, are they greedy? And I'll let you make the judge of what I ran into. So this is a design that I was sent. This is, first of all, they only sent me two pages. And most of these illustrations have 50 or 60 pages to them because there's lots of details. And what this advisor, this insurance agent did not send was the cost and expense summary page, which breaks down all of the expenses, all of the COIs, all of the charges. But I want you to kind of focus on the premium. And then there's something else that I'm gonna draw your attention to if you've never been made aware of it. So in every illustration, there are there is going to be some type of identifier as to what the target premium is in the design. And here I kind of blow, blew it up make it a little bit higher, but TP stands for target premium, okay? His funding level, the client's funding level is $200,000 a year for 15 years. So it's a healthy funding schedule. But the target premium on this design is $174,000. And I think when I did that math, that is a little over 85% of a ratio of the first year premium going to the target premium. Now, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, target premium is how the life insurance agent gets paid. That's where their commissions come from for the first year. Every year thereafter, it's considered to be a renewal as long as the premium gets paid. But target premium is the commissionable amount for the life insurance agent. And depending on where they're at, how they get paid, this person pe can be getting 100% of that number, plus or minus a couple percentage points. So let's just assume he's getting 100%. When my client, or he was hoping it would be his client, but when my client put in $200,000, this joker was gonna try to get paid $174,000. And you can see where it reflects on the account value. It's an added expense to the policy it causes the policy to underperform as a rule of thumb and it's just a rule of thumb the target premium relative to the first year premium should be around 30 percent 30 percent of 200 grand is sixty thousand dollars now maybe it's 35 percent maybe it's 40 percent maybe it's 25 percent it changes based on the company and the product and how it works but as a rule of thumb in a solid design, if you know you're not, if you wanna determine whether or not you're dealing with a greed factor, the target premium should be in that 30 to 40% range plus or minus. This is in the 85% plus range. And you are transparent to see that. That is a clear number for you to see on every design. What a loser this guy is trying to take advantage of my clients. So what I did, and this didn't take me long at all, I very quickly went to a software program that I have access to, and I duplicated his premium schedule of $200,000 a year for 15 years at the exact same interest rate. And to show you something else, my client was doing this to solve for retirement distributions. In this guy's example, it's $614,000 a year retirement distributions at age 70, which on its own in a complete vacuum or bubble, that sounds like a pretty decent number. Oh, I can put in $200,000 a year for 15 years and 25 years from now, 10 years after I stop funding, I can get $615,000 a year tax free. That's how this guy's selling it, not mentioning the fact that he's making 85% plus first year commission off of the guy, off of his. But when I ran it, and again, this took me less than four minutes probably to run, my distributions without any focus on design, without any focus on is it the right index crediting method, with, with I was being lazy, right, in, in doing this design, but I was doing it to prove a point to my client. This $615,000 that this guy's showing, dude, look at this. I, I changed nothing except for the fact that I went to 11 other carriers. This only shows the first five, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight different carriers plus there's three more on the other page so 11 different illustrations and all of them are producing more than what this is this guy's producing and by the way he was showing pack life in one of his designs i too am showing pack life but let's let's go to what the commission difference on his pack life versus my pack life is so if i pull this up 
and I go to my design, look at what the target premium is on my design. $72,000 versus this guy's $174,000. So he's trying to make $100,000 more than really what he should be making in this design. Let me pull that back up for you guys again so you can see that. And the impact goes to the client, right? It, it goes to you. It goes to you in the form of what the actual accumulated value is gonna be on an annual basis because and what the distribution is gonna be on an annual basis. I mean, this is, this is crazy stuff. And by the way, it doesn't stop there. So if I go back into the design and let me just click on a different product, just any different product. So this is gonna be Mutual of Omaha. So Mutual of Omaha, let's find what the actual, okay, right here. You can see right here, TP, $58,000, which is firmly in that range that I was mentioning to you that it needs to be in. And then you find what the potential distributions are gonna be. Uh, let me roll down here, $58,000, same funding schedule, same 6%, $734,000 is, is the distribution versus the, again, I keep forgetting what he was showing, the $615,000. Again, I think this guy is either lazy, ignorant, or greedy. What do you think? Comment below whether you think this guy was lazy, ignorant, or greedy. And let me show a different design. One more design, different company. Let me just pick this one. Okay, I, I just randomly picked it. Okay, Corbridge. Corbridge listed a little bit differently. They listed as FCP instead of TP, FCP, here it is right here, annual target premium, 72,405, right down here, 72,405. And when we go back into this design, uh, Corbridge Financial had a distribution of $720,000, 734, 747, and this guy is trying to rip my client off and rip you off if you don't know better when you look at how an insurance structure is done, okay? So let me keep going though. This doesn't stop with this guy. There are two business partners. One business partner owns 25% of the company. One business partner owns 75% of the company. This same insurance agent tried to rip off the other business owner as well. $400,000 a year premium for 13 years. Look at what he tried to make his commission. $352,000. <laughs> off of a $400,000 premium outlay. I mean, give me a break, dude. Look, target premium, when I ran the design on a $400,000 premium, 156 in that 30% range, $400,000, $140,000, $400,000, $166,000. I mean, it's still gonna be in that 30 to 40% range depending on the age of the client, but this is why people hate us as life insurance agents because we already make enough money when we design it properly. And then you've got losers like this guy out here trying to rip them off. Between the two designs, this life insurance agent's trying to make $520,000 on a horrible design. Again, do you think that this guy was lazy? Do you think he's ignorant? Or what I think, I think this guy's greedy. I think he's all about just trying to rip these clients off because they don't know better. They're conservative. They're trying to do things. And again, I'm not even saying the designs that I put out here finished the seven caveats. I'm just trying to prove a point on one of the seven caveats that you've got to work with the proper advisor. Not everybody with an insurance license even should be even selling this. This is why we get a bad reputation. Now, it doesn't have to be at this level that I'm talking about of $200,000 or 400,000. I just happen to work in a market with individuals that are business owners, high net worth individuals, entrepreneurs, where they're trying to really supercharge their retirement with tax-free distributions. And if you want, message me and I can reach out to you and we can have a conversation. But this guy, man, what, even if you're at a $20,000 level or a $2,000 level, the ratio still applies. You should not be having the target premium in that 85, 80%. It, the target premium for the premium that you're paying on an annual basis as a client needs to be in that 30 to 40% range at worst, right? And then the, when the design gets better, that can even get lower and lower and lower for you as a client. 
But man, you got to have the right advisor. You got to have the right product, the right company, the right design, index strategy, funding strategy, and usage of the leverage in the in design. And what we just focused on today was just one. I mean, this loser of an advisor gives all of us a bad name and it's why you don't trust, but there is a way to do it. You can get with a good trusted advisor, reach out to me, DM me, message me below. If you found this to be helpful, I've got all kinds of software that we can use technology to our advantage to build the proper design for you. I'll see you in the next video. Be good.